we can uh, we can find love courses here. So I suggest using this uh, I suggest using this website generally. And in this case, we have a, a course called Justice. So this is a, a course from Harvard University <coughs> for undergraduate students on justice. Okay. So you can go. I have the link here. You can go to edX. You can register. It doesn't take. It's free to register. And you get into the course. Okay. So uh, after you register, you can sign in. Right. Then I'll just show you how to go in and you type in your name and your password. Okay. So sometimes in my free time I take some courses. It's like a nerd, right? Do you understand nerd or geek? Yes. Like Bill Gates. Bill Gates also does that in his free time. Instead of watching the drama on the TV, he takes some online course. He learns how to do something else, right? Uh, so you can see that I have signed up to a few different courses, right? I took a course recently on the global poverty. It was quite interesting from MIT, okay? Then uh, here we can see justice. So it comes up on your dashboard. You click on view archi archive course. If you want, you can pay money, but you don't have to pay money. It's just contribution. Otherwise, you can audit, audit the course. So here you go to courseware. Courseware is the stuff for the course. And here you have all the different weeks and the different videos. Okay. So you can have a video, lecture one, so you can watch the video and you can read on the subtitles at the side, okay? And also you can get some free reading, reading material about justice. So here they have also doing the right thing, right? We studied about that for business, but now we're ta I said first we were going to learn the answer for business and then we could take a step back a little bit and just talk about generally. So today, with moral philosophy, we're going to talk about these things more generally instead of just apply to business, right? Mm -hmm. So we can click here, we can get to chapter one. And for example, today we're going to study some of the examples from this chapter. So what we're going to study today is based on, moral philosophy is based on this course. So if you want to study more, you can go to this course, okay? The link is uh, online. Here, under the moral philosophy, we can see internet course. And um, we're today we're just going to discuss that and study some uh, study some philosophers like Kant. We already mentioned Kant, right? We'll also study about Rawls and other types of philosophy. But first of all, we need to discuss. So don't turn your desks, we're just starting now. So first of all, we're going to discuss some questions to get an idea about our own moral philosophy. Okay, so the first one, I'll tell a kind of story. Okay, and then you have to answer this question with your group. Discuss with your group and answer the question. So uh, this story is about, there are two train tracks. You're on the train. I'm, I, I'm very good at art. <laughs> this is you on the train, right? And you have a lever. And the train track is going to the left or the right. But currently you're on this track. You're going this way. There's five people here. Okay? Five people. And there's one person here. If you don't do anything, you're going to hit the five people with the train. If you change the lever, you're going to hit that person with the train. Okay? So what are you going to do? Are you going to push the lever and change the trolley to go this way? If and why? If you hit the person, hmm? what person die? Of course, if you hit five people, five people might die. Yes, probably. The train, they're on, working on the track, working. Uh, yes. None of the person is related to me, right? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we change the track? Yes, you can change the lever, but you have to push the lever. You have to make the decision. How about emergency brake? 
<laughs> yes, you don't have any emergency brake, unfortunately. <laughs> I wouldn't access the train. Huh? Then I wouldn't access the train. You wouldn't get on the train? Yeah, because it's emergency. Emergency. You thought the emergency brake was working, but you found out it's not working. Okay. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Discuss with your group. Deciding to, you're going to push the lever, and this person, you're going to arm this person instead. Why? Can anyone in your group help her? You, the train was going this way and you decide to change the lever, do you think that you killed this person <laughs> by your decision? I'm gonna left. Mm, it's more important to save those people rather than your fault. Okay. Then let's look at the next question. So, now there is, a, there is a fat man on the bridge. This time you're not on the trolley, right? So there's we don't have to worry about this, right? There's a bridge here, then there's a fat man on the bridge, okay? Then here's you. You can push the fat person off the bridge and land on the track. You can push the fat person off the bridge. They will land on the track. They will block the train. Land on the track? Yes. So what are you going to do? Would you push the fat man over the bridge? 
How is it different to the first situation? Discuss it with your group. Yes. Yes. So you have to discuss in English. Push the fat man, why not? to go to the left in the first case? Yes. So in the first case you decide to go to the left and here you think it's murder. So how is it different? Accident. Uh, hmm? Okay, so here you, anyway you're in the train cart so you have to make a decision one or the other, right? Like it's an accident, the thing broke. But here you're, you don't have to be involved if you don't want, right? You have to decide. Okay, so hands up, who said they are going to push the fat man? <laughs> they are going to push the fat man. And who's not going to push the fat man? Hands up. So most people are saying that it's wrong to commit murder. Right? But five people can die instead of this person? Mm -hmm. what, what would Bruce Willis do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Do you know Bruce Willis? He will stab the train himself. <laughs> jump off the bridge onto the train. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. He will push it the other way. Yes, in the last Die Hard movie, he was able to jump on top of the fire plane. You know the fighter plane? Mm. Did you see that? So he was able to beat the fighter plane just by himself. <laughs> Probably he can do that. Okay, so the next one is uh, we have a doctor. And uh, there was a, he was at the war, and at the war, s six people got injured and came to his office. So he has a choice. One person is very badly injured. Looks like they're going to die. So 
he can spend a lot of time trying to save that person, or he can just forget about that person and try to save the five people whose injuries aren't as serious but can also die if they don't get attention in the first day. So what are you going to do? Forget about the one person and try to save the five people, or try to save the one person and forget about the five people. What do you think? What's it? As a quick answer for this one. Same but I was I would go for the youngest one. The youngest ones? Yeah, They're all the, the same age. <laughs> <laughs> They're all about twenty. They're in the, they don't usually send the old guys on the front line in war, right? So they all they just pick the twenty year olds. Okay. <laughs> Your age, they wouldn't send me. They'd send you guys. I'll be at the back just giving directions. <laughs> so, what did you say? Save five people. Save the five people, right? Then the one person, that's the kind of decision that doctors have to make. But now let's look at this situation. So you have five patients that need a transplant. One needs a heart transplant, one needs a kidney transplant. Do you understand kidney? Yes. Yeah. One needs a... Uh, another type of transplant, right? So five different organs, like liver or so on. Yeah. And you have, if they don't get the transplants by tomorrow, they're all going to die, right? Then one healthy person walks into your office for a checkup. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Would you take out the organs from the one healthy person? <laughs> the same <laughs> five people. <laughs> Discuss with your group. So let's keep on. Yeah, so if you take the five organs from the one person, he will die, but you can save the five people, right? <laughs> if you don't take the organs from the one person, the five people will die. Okay, so uh, John, do you Yes, what are you going to do? I can translate. It's murder, killing the innocent person. What other effect could it have? If you kill the innocent person who just came in for a checkup, what other negative consequence could we have? Do you understand consequence? Yeah. Result? Not just to that person, but just generally. Can anybody think of a, another negative consequence? People wouldn't trust the doctors anymore? Yes, people mightn't go for checkups or they mightn't trust their doctor. They might be afraid to go into the doctor's office, right? So again, it's a different answer, right? It's like this, the last one. You decide, the la in the first case, anyway, the person was injured, right? The one person was badly <coughs> injured. You decided to sacrifice the one person for the five people. But in this case, you're saying that that one healthy person has some rights, okay? Or that it's the wrong thing, it's just the wrong thing to do that. But some people might say the consequence is more important. So I say five people, the consequence is more important, right? So let's see. So hands up, who would take out the organs from the healthy person? Nobody? Okay. So next one. So I uh, just I have to tell the story first. So in the US Army, they went to Afghanistan and they were having some secret mission 
Laid up nice. Why did you say ah? <laughs> There's a lot of movies with secret missions of the US. <laughs> So anyway, they went into the... Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor mission. Lone Survivor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me at the end if it's the same, the same one. So anyway, they're in the Afghanistan at night time. It's very dark. They have a secret mission to uh, find, like, you know, Osama bin Laden. Mm. Maybe not Osama bin Laden, but another high up terrorist person in the local village, the next village. So it's just a small number of soldiers, okay, like, like a group of 20 or 30 soldiers. But in Af the Afghanistani group in the town is much bigger. So if they get caught by the Afghanistani group, then they could be killed. So when they're going in the desert very quietly, they meet some goat herds who are about 15 or 16 years old. Two 16-year-old boys from Afghanistan. They don't have any rope to tie them up. Okay, they have no way to tie them up. So what are you going to do? Are you going to let them go? It could be that they are going to tell, go to the next vi village very quickly and tell the Afghanistani people that the U.S. Secret Service is coming. They have no air support, so they are on the ground by themselves. They have no way to get out quickly, right? Uh, so they're kind of like trapped there, or their only choice is they could kill the two goat herds and to save 30 or save their mission, 30 or soldiers, right? Do you understand the problem? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? Would you kill the goat herds or let them go? You have no way to stop them. You're just moving. You're moving through in the night time. Okay. So they, caught, they saw you, and you have to decide what are you going to do. So discuss with your group. You can let them go or kill them. You know, go. The person who looks after the goat. Yeah. Go to the person who looks after the goat. In Afghanistan, like a farmer. Kill the goat herd. Why? It's more wise. So why is it more wise? What's your reason? I want to know your reason. Is it a consequence reason? You can save more lives. Yes. Okay. So this is a true story. So in the end, they decided to let them go. And then guess what happened? Oh, uh, many, many Afghanistan soldiers uh, pushed the uh, U.S. Army. So they one 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 person alive and 
another people die. Mm. So the goat herds told the local village, right, when they got away. <coughs> yes, probably likely thing, right? And then the Afghanistani forces was able to surprise the American forces, and they killed everybody except for one. I I know I know one one person. One person left. Okay. So the guy who let them go, I think he was the guy who was left, and he said he regret letting them go in the end, right? So. <laughs> Hands up, who decided to kill the goat herds? Who decided to let them go? Did you guys decide to let them go? Okay. So... <laughs> so what do you think about this question? Bomb has been planted in New York City and it will explode in 24 hours unless the police are able to find it. Would it be right for the police to use torture to extract information from the suspected bomber? Have you seen the movie Taken? Yes. What if your daughter was taken by some uh, human traffickers and you have 24 hours to save her? Do you think it's okay to torture? To extract information. <laughs> right, have you watched the movie? Yeah. Yes. So a little bit similar type of question. Okay, so discuss with your partners. Do you understand torture? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> has to decide depending on the exact circumstance what to do. Okay. So again, it depends on their moral philosophy, right? So in that no case the guy thought that it was wrong to kill the two things. So they have to look at the risk and analyze the what's going on. But I'm not sure if they changed the protocol of the army after that. Mm -hmm. But I guess they didn't. Okay. says here suspected, you understand suspected? Yes. What would you say if I say that torture is against the human rights? It's a fundamental right of humans not to be tortured. What's your answer? Uh, but the um, New York City is many people are like the mm. live there. And time is so, so little. Mm. So I think um, we say the many people mm -hmm. Use the torture is the right thing. Okay. Do you think Liam Neeson was right? <laughs> taken? <laughs> Did you like the movie? Uh, hmm? no. 
Okay, so hands up. Who is going to torture the suspected bomber? Who's not going to torture? So this is one of the groups who's doing the fire uh, case also has this kind of question. <laughs> I'll discuss with your room. It's the end of World War II. Your scientists have just made the atomic bomb. You have the choice. You can have a prolonged war with Japan, where a lot of people could die, like the Vietnam War or something like that. Japanese people don't surrender, right? They just keep fighting until they die. They don't surrender. So the tradition of the samurai in Japan, right? Yes. So it's going to be a very long and bloody war with Japan <coughs> if you try to attack just generally. Or you could use the atomic bomb which your scientists have just developed, but a lot of innocent people are going to die. In Hiroshima, some 80,000 people, including women and children, innocent people could die. But you could save, you think, you could save millions of lives of soldiers by dropping the atomic bomb. So this was the decision of the U.S. president at the time. So what would you do? Discuss with your group. And after that, there will be another war. <laughs> Okay, so uh, E. Uh, Jin Yong. Oh, isn't that here? Uh, e. Su Ji. E. G. Su. Yes. Yes. <coughs> I <coughs> use the bomb. Yes. Why? Soldiers? Yes. More soldiers? Lives? Yes. Yes, okay. So a little bit similar to some of the last <coughs> questions we've been talking about. So on a bigger, very big scale, okay. So uh, we have these different types of the moral reasoning. So if you like, you can turn around for a minute or just look up here for a minute. So we have a uh, Consequentialists, so consequences result. So consequentialist moral reason locates morality in the consequences of an act. So it's asking, will there be more happiness in the world that will re result from the thing you do? So if we are going to think about that, we are going to push the fat man off the bridge because we are going to say that consequences here, one person dies instead of five people. Okay? So we're not thinking about their rights or murder, we're just thinking about what is going to be more happiness in the world. So their families and people will be happier because they didn't die. Okay, then just his family is just fall. So here we we hear utility and utilitarian. Maximize utility means try to make uh, the most people happy. Okay? So this, there is some problem with this that you can discuss with your groups. 
So do you know the Romans, the ancient Romans? Yes. So they used to throw people to the lions in the Colosseum. Has anybody ever been to the Colosseum? In Rome? No? You went there? What's it like? I didn't see them. Didn't see people thrown to the lions? <laughs> Did it go on the right day? Which on sort of Tuesday that was on the right Okay. What did you think about it? Colosseum? You went there too? Did you go together? Is it impressive? Yes. Okay, so the Romans used to throw people to the lions there. So, or the gladiator fights used to happen there. So if enough cheering spectators can get fun and enjoyment from this, do you think this is okay for a utilitarian? Uh, utilitarian, he thinks that the main point is that there is more happiness in the world, is the important thing. <coughs> so discuss with your group. Do you think this is okay for a utilitarian? The gladiator fights are throwing the usually the criminals, the Romans threw the criminals to the lions, right? Discuss with your partner or your group. So we're not, the utilitarian is not thinking about the rights, right? They're thinking about the maximum happiness for the people. Well, do you think this would be okay for them? They're not thinking about rights. <coughs> okay, so uh, Yang Hyun Sok, what do you think? Violent. Or gladiator. Okay. You can fit in about, I don't know, 40,000 people in the Colosseum, right? They're all very happy, but you think even for the utilitarian, one person dying could be worse result than 40,000 people being happy for the afternoon? Okay, so this is one of the challenges for the utilitarian, right? They're not, they're not so much looking at people's rights, so we could have this kind of situation. So the second type is the categorical moral reasoning. So we have duties, this is the duties and rights, regardless of the consequences. So we were using this when we said that for the fat man it's just wrong, it's murder wrong thing to do for me to kill them, right? We didn't think about the consequences that we could have saved five people, but we just said, just it's wrong. It's not right to do that. Well, this is using this kind of hard reasoning. So you can see from the last questions, do you use consequential moral reasoning or categorical moral reasoning more so, right? So, uh, let's take a break now for 10 minutes, then we'll talk about some, explain more about this categorical moral reasoning.